Hey all, Patrick Murphy here again. And uh, what we did here is we cut up all our trim. Uh, the baseboard we actually brought downstairs. This is the casing for the door, which we rounded over. This is just a test piece. Um, and then here's our quarter, inch and a quarter pieces. So what we've done here is this, this goes over a door. So we've got a six inch piece we're putting over a door. We have half inch MDF that is cut an uh, inch and a quarter. So the profile is it'll stick out here. On the top we've got inch and three quarter, but it's three quarter. So we got half inch, three quarter MDF, three quarter MDF. And what we're going to do is we're going to overhang this by three quarters inch on both sides. So the casing that's on the doors for the one door that this is for comes up equal to the six inch piece of uh, three quarter MDF. And then there's this overhang here of three quarter inch. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to, so we cut this to size from the outside casing to the outside casing and then an inch and a half longer for these pieces so that we get the three quarter reveal on each side. Now additionally what we did here just to we left it with the square edges originally and we liked it rounded over. So we rounded over this edge on both sides of the six inch piece. And then additionally, uh, I routed over this edge, the two ends and the two top on both of these pieces. So it gives it a nice round profile. So the next thing we're gonna do here is we're going to glue this up and nail it in, glue this up, Nail it in. Um, shouldn't have to clamp it with the nails. Um, and then I'll caulk this line in here on both sides. And then we'll take it downstairs and we will prime it twice and paint it twice. And then we should be able to put this above the door. Now, um, so a couple lessons learned on, on routing uh, the MDF trim. We got a few example pieces here of what happens. You can see the waves in here. So as this is going through the router this way, so the bit would be down here going through the router, there's a couple things that can happen. One, keeping this tight against the router bit, because if you don't, you step away and you can see where it's flatter here and less round on top is because it's stepped away from the router bit. So trying to keep it pressed against the router bit is important and also pressed down is important. Now the other thing we noticed with that Craig rip guide that I used is uh, it didn't cut all the pieces straight, meaning some here it's, it's an over exaggeration because I missed a cut, but this is kind of what we're seeing is there's a wave to the cuts. So either the arbor on my saw is moving back and forth or there was stuff on that guide, uh, dust or something that caused it to push out. And what happens in that case is when you go to route, I don't have a flat edge. So when I put it on the router this way to send it through the bit, what you'll see is that you'll see a gap here. So when the router bit got to that gap, this is thick enough where you can't push it down. It's not going to make a difference. On these thinner strips when you're rounding over, yeah, you can press down. Uh, it's more flexible. But on a piece like this, it's not that flexible. So what happens is you can see this, there was a gap. So this is where there was a gap in the board and what happens is the router bit didn't the profile didn't hit all the way or in some cases you get this is most likely me moving and this wasn't tight enough against so you get these different little oddities in there and I tried cutting most of them any of the bad parts off I just cut off um, see a few other pieces here so this is really flat so this must have gotten away from the router bit I wasn't pushing tight enough against or my feather boards weren't tight enough against. Uh, and then here you can see in both of these cases, it's because the board probably waved one way to where there wasn't enough, you know, as you're routing it and the wood's crooked, you basically get that. Um, so cut out the bad pieces and use the good pieces, I guess. Um, where were you we getting the normal trim from Menards? this profile, a little different profile on top. Um, this is smaller, right? We wanted five and a half inch trim. They don't sell five and a half inch trim that we wanted. Um, we like this profile, but 
I couldn't find a router bit to match that, so I went with that profile instead, which is, I mean, it's fairly, this is the original Menards one, this is the bit I got, so they're fairly close. Um, they look kind of the same from, from the side here. They're kind of the same as well. Um, again, because this mist right here, you can tell the router bit should be rounder like here, but it actually went this way. So we have to do this for all our house. We, we cut enough in, in a half inch plywood. I'm sorry, half inch MDF. Now this, this regular pine trim that you get from Menards or that we got from Menards, just a hair, I think this is five eighths, this is half inch. So it's just a hair uh, thicker in the base here. Um, that didn't matter to us as much. Um, but Menards just went through a vendor change on this stuff and it was hard to find uh, to get more pieces of this. So, you know, one room we may have done this and the other rooms we want to do this. Um, is it more cost effective to make your own? I mean, it's definitely messier. Uh, it's going to take longer to prime it twice because this MDF is just going to suck up the primer and then to paint it. The, the other difference is this is pine, right? So when you go to nail this pine in, I was able to kind of nail in in these grooves to kind of hide the nails over here. I'm afraid to do that in an MDF because I'm going to have a feeling I'm going to hit and break this. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna nail it. I got enough test pieces here where I can test a few things. But really, I mean, your two by four at the bottom and your gap for your drywall is down here. So uh, nailing it twice in here isn't gonna be a big deal. And then patching those holes and then caulking along the top like you normally do uh, should be fine. So lessons learned on this is, you know, you have to have the ability to cut square MDF stock. So I think I'll use, when we get more MDF, I'll still use the Craig, but I'll make it a quarter inch longer than I really need. And then I'll take it to the table saw and try to cut it. Or I'll cut the MDF in half and try it on the table saw. My guess is the sheets are so big and heavy that putting, putting a full sheet on the table saw, you're still going to get that little bit of that wobble against the fence and it's not going to be perfectly straight. Um, but at least if you make it a quarter inch longer, you can, you can kind of cut it down that way. So those are my lessons learned on doing the trim so far. Um, next I will um, nail and glue this up uh, and just kind of go through that process.